Welcome, everyone, to the Sickos Committee Podcast. This is our podcast for the evening of Halloween. It's action time. It's spooky action. It's Toledo having a dunk tank in their end zone (laughs) while it's snowing out, which is beautiful and wonderful, and I love that. Thank you, Maxion. Today for the today is the first day of official midweek Maxion. We are done with conference to this day. Uh, the yeah, the, that was October, and now we're in Maxion November. I like this. This is really good. E- even though it's it's uh, it's October, it's basically November. Okay, it's October for two more hours Eastern time. It is. It is November zeroth. We're moving from Mactober to Macvember. Mm-hmm. Someone, I, it must have been a, so, the full cast episode. It was like the hunt for Mac Browntober or something like that. That that sounds right for them. First off, I do want to say, well, let's introduce him before I get yelled at. <laughs> Always, I'm Jordan. With me tonight, I have Kamish, Pit Girl, Beth, Special pre- Spreadsheeter, Kevin, and Ken on the ones and twos. Kamish, how was your Halloween? Uh, it was good. We did the family costume, so I got the two kiddos, and uh, we we dressed up the, as the Flintstones. Right. So uh, I was I was Fred Flintstone, and I'm handing out candy, and one of the kids comes up to me and is like, "Hey, dude, you're that cereal guy." <laughs> yeah. And then I- it then it and then it dawned on me. I was like, "They've never seen the cartoon." Have yeah. <laughs> it's it's oh, probably I, vit- vitamins know. or cereal. And I I feel. As old as the Flintstones when they took place as soon as they said that, I was like, oh my God, they've never seen the Flintstones. They only realize they're from Fruity Pebbles. You should have had or, uh, or Cocoa Pebbles. You should have found some Winston cigarettes and been like, these are super smooth, Barney. Yeah. Oh my, God. My, favorite he- ci- my favorite cigarette commercials. <laughs> Kamish, did you immediately like reenact the end of Last Crusade in your soul? It, it was... Because the the parent of the child was there, <laughs> and they, we both like locked eyes and look at each other, and we're like, "Oh my god, we're old." Um, so it was kind of like a joint moment of both of us just like mentally crumbling to dust. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was it was something that that ridiculous. Um, I do want to give a shout out to the the Halloween Bucky Vampire Two. Yeah, um, yeah that that became a selfie spot. So they would get candy from us, and then they started taking like family photos Mine in too. front of the Bucky. Mm-hmm. There, there were like kids dressed up in like Bucky onesies, like the the Bucky the Beaver onesies, because it was it was kind of cold for San Antonio. It was like fifty something, and in, in San Antonio, you know that that's that that's probably like twenty in Pennsylvania. That's cold, terms. yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> just it's like a thirty degree difference, you know, in in your mind. Just just put that there. But yeah, it was templation. Yes, templation. It, it was it was fun. They had a lot of fun with the the thing. Uh, apparently, like traffic was horrible around the area, so they were doing some late trick or treating. But otherwise, it was great. Great night. Um, you know, we we whatever we had left, we just put it in a bowl and we uh, called it a night and made a podcast. Hey, girl, how are you? I'm good. I live in a neighborhood that gets a lot of Halloween traffic, and I had a good time handing out candy. Had some teenagers who had a shopping cart, and I told them I would not ask them where the shopping cart came from, and they told me they found it on the side of the road. Honestly, I believe them. Mm-hmm. Um, there was also a kid. It, it is pretty dark. There's like one street light on the diagonal opposite corner from where I live, and there was a kid on the other side of the street wearing what I thought was a black jersey with an eight on it. So I screamed, Kenny Pickett jersey kid, hello. And then he walked over and it turned out that he was wearing a Lamar Jackson jersey and it's just dark as shit and I can't see. Yeah. So, But I'm talking that up as I accidentally did a pretty good troll. So mm-hmm. the good heart wants it once. Yeah, yeah. Boo. <laughs> Beth, how are you? Um, I'm fine. You know what? It's fine. <laughs> That good, huh? It's that good. Fine, which fine. which which arrangement of simple gifts was it? A very bad one. Okay, just a real, real, real bad one. I I'm playing I I'm I'm playing in a quartet right now with some lovable older gentlemen who want to live their life at a certain BPM and constantly want to program songs that get faster and slower. Gotcha, Kevin. How are you, sir? I am good. Uh, I don't get much. Uh, trick-or-treaters where I live so uh, 
my Halloween is limited to dressing up to what will scare Jordan the most. And since I'm always on at this point, right before the Texas game, <laughs> I am wearing my Kansas State shirt tonight. <laughs> Ooh. extremely spooky Ooh. Ooh. It, it's worth it's worth noting listener that i'm not going to comment on halloween because i'm part of the very weird belt of pennsylvania that does not celebrate halloween on halloween my halloween was last thursday so i'm in the future most of my brain also, has been in november for almost a week having finished the poll results before the podcast started this time uh yeah. the Ooh. superior holiday one in the poll and thanksgiving has defeated halloween so oh yeah. Strong takes. Yeah. Well, the first thing we have to talk about is our is our news. Is it Brian Brian Ferens is going to be fired at the end of this year? No, he's not. He's going to go live in a farm upstate. <laughs> he's going to go where my go where my puppy went when I was little. Iowa State. I, not, hey, you know what? If if someone named if someone named you know Brian Barents shows up in Iowa State. <laughs> With a mustache, I don't think anyone's going to argue. I, I am I am surprised they did it now, but this seems like the correct choice. I wouldn't have let him wait out the year. I feel like that's just what are you doing? You were going to end up in a situation where you were going to have to keep him. That's that's always the the threat, right? Like, how long did it take Texas to get rid of Charlie Strong because he kept like like inching along with a lifeline? No, it, it feels like they did the less miles thing. Yes. So in, in a way that they, they, you know, Les Miles messed up. And that was just the last time LSU was just like, no, you're not going to save your job by some crazy miracle by scoring like 70 points against USC in a bowl game. You're not going to do that. Uh, we are going to clip your wings after you had two yards in the second half. I'm surprised that they didn't do it over the bye. Like they waited the entire bye week. Right. And they're like, okay, they're playing this weekend. Okay, now it's now now it's his last go. It's 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 Brian Ferentz's last rodeo. It he's gonna go out like the the man riding the nuclear bomb uh, from the flame <laughs> with this cowboy hat. <laughs> just just the four verts every single time, Brian. Let's he, go. He's going to, but here's the thing, he's gonna get hired elsewhere because he's yep. still a competent offensive coordinator. He's, he's going to still in the NFL again. He's again. a competent yeah. offensive line coach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I think somewhere he will be a very good offensive line coach and maybe he can learn how to be an offensive coordinator. I, I, I don't, even with the Nepo babies, I don't wish them the worst. I still I, hope that some, I still hope that he learns how to do this job. Well, I look, look, I, I didn't, I, I purposely avoided learning what Nepo baby was <laughs> until like today. Okay. Uh, I like I, I read a piece by Alex Kirshner about, uh, and then he he dropped the term "nepo baby," and I was like, "Damn it! Now I know what it is." I was just like, "I am not learning this. Ter- I am opting out of this term." And then now it's just like, "Oh God, I I don't like the term. It's it's I don't." I was like, "I didn't want to know what it was," and now I do, and I I'm mad. This is going to be interesting going forward. We'll see what happens at Iowa. I would, you know, I people have already put out lists of like who they're going to hire, who they should hire, all that stuff. That's not our business. That's nothing we really care about. Nope. I just hope that for the next four games, Iowa just does absolutely crazy shit. Why not? Well, the thing that's really weird about this to me is that the statement firing him came from the AD, which I'm not sure I've ever seen an athletic director make a coordinator decision like that, right? Like, Put out the press conference it's from the ad and I mean, it, has, AD, it has to be because it's she's he's her the ad report. was his boss because he didn't report to his dad that's true and i i guess is it an interim aid i think someone i saw it was in like it, I, she is an not she, she should not she should not be the interim like like she should have been hired as full-time already i still think she's going to be hired as the full-time because like she she like she was put in that place to get to become full-time i forget where beth uh beth gates beth Gertz was before this. She was uh, AD at Ball State for a long time. Yeah, I think she was Maxion. Yeah, I and then and then she came. One. She came as deputy in 2022. And if I remember correctly, it was very much like to be to become. No, in, in order to skirt nepotism laws, um, when Kirk hired Brian on on Iowa as an offensive line coach, it, basically they had to put Gary Barta as his direct boss. 
Um, so basically that's what happened. And so the AD, the interim AD, which I don't know why it's still interim, just make it full time. Uh, Mm -hmm. Bardo retired or just like left the post or resigned in like August, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I don't remember when exactly earlier this year and she's been the interim. So, so she had to pull the the trigger essentially. Like Gary was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm out of here. Have, Have fun, Beth. Uh, so yeah, that's the reason why the AD had to do it. It's just because they skirted nepotism laws. So now this is here. Now we ha- do we get Brian Ferentz unleashed? Yes. Or does he just do the same thing? Brian Ferentz unchained. Now, unchained. like fucking Run go the for triple, it now. Brian. Yeah, I, whatever. Hey, you want you want to do three yards in a cloud of dust? Like for real now? Do it, man. Make do what makes you happy. What if you combine four birth four verts with student body left? What happens? I think, I think you start getting into Canadian football. I think that's illegal. Coward. If the band is on the field. You know, yeah, that's I mean that's what literally becomes. Uh, I do want to shout out some of the folks on our Discord. Bread Lover, Maze Flowers, Little Mac, and Ben for helping us get together our Arby's list this week. We did schools closest by schools by distance to Arby's. Once again, Tulsa must have just a wonderful little set of fast food around their stadium because Tulsa wins again. And Marshall, too. Who knew? I'm beginning to wonder if Tulsa Stadium is a food court. It, uh, apparently, it's close enough. And people were complaining about the the Marshall one. They were like, it should be closer. Because like, you can throw, you know, someone said you could throw like a wrapper and hit the back of the scoreboard from the, uh, from the <laughs> Arby's parking lot. Well, maybe that's the solution to America's aging mall infrastructure mm-hmm. to start converting malls into stadiums. Ooh, I like this. And keep like a food court, the hot topic, and like, you know, maybe More... bed, like bad Bath and Body Works. Are and they lids. still around? And lids. And lids. lids. Yeah. I mean, I now I want to go back into a hot topic. I need to find one. I used to wear a spike chain, neck, like a spike chain choker at one point in my life. Oh my oh, lord! Oh, you have to produce <laughs> photographic evidence. I'll see if I can yes. find some. I'll see if I can find some. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I, used so have, wow, I used to have a spike chain choker. Yeah. So you had the spike chain choker. You had yeah. the chain wallet also, right? Of course I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's mandatory. Uh-huh. How uh, wide? How wide were the jinkos? So that was a little. It was, that was a little past my time. I wore a shredded. Okay. I wore like pretty shredded jeans at that point. Okay. What What, what was the that boy that that one year between you and me may as well be a chasm sometimes. Yeah, yeah. That, well, I, I was on the wrong side of that. What was the footwear here? Oh, cons, or oh. or vans. Usually vans or cons. Okay. So you were not an Adidas sort of creature, sort of. No, critter. I had I had checkered Vans though. I'm just Airwalks. Baffled yeah. by you calling Converse cons. I've never heard that before. Cons. I was struggling with that as well. What the fuck? I don't know. Cons. Yeah. Pretty There's an cons. electronics uh, store here called Cons, and I was like, why is he wearing that on his feet? <laughs> uh, I I did wear high tops for a while too. Yeah. Converse high tops. That was my that was my go to. But I had the checkered vans too. When the checkered vans came back, my middle school start like my middle schoolers when I was teaching started wearing them again. That made me very happy because I was like, oh, I'm gonna skank. Let me show everyone how to skank in these things. You know, it occurs to me that a great way to get people to come to your stadium if you're struggling with attendance is to have the very last of something, like open up one final Radio Shack in the Tulsa Stadium. Ooh, or a Blockbuster. Yeah, it's it has been a an ongoing thing between uh arthur and a friend of ours and me for the longest time that we are going to take a road trip to the last blockbuster someday at, wait at gitmo well there was one in bend oregon until relatively recently yeah. okay it uh, was that the, one. The, the only way i can think of is the one at gitmo can't road trip to gitmo unfortunately Coward. i mean one of my <laughs> one of my goals attitude. in the next few weeks in the next few years is to go to the last remaining racks Ooh. They they road trip to Gitmo in Bad Boys too. Yeah, exactly. See, and I'm pretty sure there was a Harold and Kumar where they got to Gitmo as well. And what are we if not basically Bad Boys too? Mm-hmm. Well, before we go too more off the rails, let's talk about our preliminary poll results. No rails, never has been. We got our <laughs> nope. poll results, and how many total votes do we have? Total ballots do we have this time? Uh, it was just under 1500, 1496 okay. Got there. is the number that I have right now. Yeah. Love it. Um, not the most we've ever had, but the most we've had this year by love, love to see a it. few hundred. Yeah. I think we, we increased from the October poll. We went to, I think we were like 11 
hundred high eleven hundreds, yeah. Eleven hundred ninety three. I think we're now at at fourteen ninety six. So yeah, basically three hundred more, three hundred more ballots. Uh, let's talk through some of these top ones. I'll read them off, and we'll see how we go. Number one, of course, in our hearts and in the votes is Iowa. Not their most commanding performance this year, though. They've uh, there's been some love spread around. Yeah. Um, well, it's still pretty commanding as far as this year goes, but they had higher point totals last year. Um, but uh, yeah, no, they're still doubling up second place. So second place still being no Ryan doubt. Ferentz, which is basically yes. Iowa. <laughs> Number four being the Big West, which is also Iowa. Number three, Georgia Tech. This is a surprise here. I think it's because of their off again and on again craziness that Georgia Tech has slid into the, the three spots. It's really impressive. They went. A lot of these Georgia Tech votes were consolidated from Georgia Tech in even games and Georgia Tech in odd games okay. being adjacent <laughs> entries in people's okay. ballots. Really, okay, folks, that's a really funny. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Number five, Sam Houston coming up from like the low like the low twenties last time all the way up. That's impressive. And then number six, Connor Stallions making his pole debut. That right there, that's the kind of hustle we like to see, folks. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin, I'll write you a spelling macro. <laughs> that's right. Connor Stallions, he's got your six. Well, I mean, like, is your spelling macro going to include the people that called him Chris Stallions and Carter <laughs> Stallions and Custer Stallions? I like and- Custer. Yeah. Yeah, Chandler Stallions. Like, yeah, we were going to do like C parentheses, S T A parentheses, like S T A, you know, percent sign. That'll get you there. C- Custer Stallion sounds like a Civil War general that got killed at Appomattox. It was Custer Stallion's last stand he when he cut, took. He was when he was down cutting, when he was cutting videos at the Central Michigan game. Okay, then we have. From there, James Madison at seven, Nebraska at eight, Colorado at nine, Clemson at ten. Clemson, you're making climbs here. Oh, yeah. As- especially when Dabo starts yelling at people, being like, what is it? If you oh, boy. if you want my money, come apply for the job. Hey Dabo, I'd love to. I'm gonna th- you know what? I'm getting my resume ready. I'm excited to come join and lead that Clemson program back into prominence. Hire me. <laughs> Related to that, Tyler from Spartanburg came in 136th with a respectable 80 points. <laughs> Someone found Tyler from Spartanburg. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> oh, I need to do more call-in shows like that. Number 11 is Air Force. 12 USC, 13 Michigan State, 14 Kansas, 15 Michigan. Michigan on here twice, including Connor Stallion. 16, wow. <laughs> 16 Northwestern, 17 Yukon, 8 Rutgers, 19 Pitt. Pitt's back, baby. Don't vote for us. We're not fun. We just suck. No, We're not, not sickos. Well, y- y'all beat Louisville, though, on the CW. I don't even know what that means anymore. We don't deserve to be in the top 20 for that. Uh, that the credit for the Louisville win goes to the CW. That is true. Yes. Yeah. It 20. does mean that Pitt, Notre Dame, and Louisville have the stupidest triangle of hate. <laughs> oh, it is it is so <laughs> stupid. I'll make that graphic. You uh Miami 20, UMass 21, Virginia 22, Minnesota 23, Arizona 24, and rounding out the top 25 is the Pac 2. Cal and Stanford did drop out of our top 30, of our top 25 this time. Uh Stanford's at 27 and Cal is at 31. I enjoy seeing votes for the CW at 33. Teletubby is at 41. <laughs> I have questions. I do too. Like, yeah, That's my fault for time. mentioning it on the last podcast, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. There were, yeah, there was a lot of, a lot, a lot of Teletubbies. In I see, I see. Kevin out here putting his thumb on the scales. Huh? Hey, you know what? That's. That's entirely legit because we've done that plenty of times. I think this is our highest ranking on our own poll. We got to number 62 this time. <laughs> I, I just I just love that our voters have better memories for what we talk about on this podcast than we do. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a, that's a thousand percent the case. Especially now that I don't edit it anymore. I have no clue what I say on here anymore. I immediately memory hole it. Yeah. Honestly, I somewhat- do enjoy the adjacent coaches in 48 and 49 of Kirk Ferentz and Alex Grinch. Mm-hmm. 
if you, man, if you're a coordinator and the crowd knows your name well, well enough to chant it, you fucked up. Mm-hmm. Did we get any votes for the Grink? Uh, there were a few they did get rolled into Alex Grinch. That's, oh, okay. So we, did, um, we didn't have it separate for was the Grink there. Okay. Um, I would no, like I to just take... assumed they were all talking about Alex Grinch. Well, they were, but yes. <laughs> I would like to take uh, the... a moment to thank the voters who have voted for individual municipalities in Pennsylvania, which include Beavertown with a number one vote coming in at number three. Oh, there was an entire ballot of only Pennsylvania towns. That's wonderful. Pennsylvania town voter. I love you. Um, <laughs> Lidditz coming in at 432. Hot Bottom coming in at 483. Uh, Jersey Shore coming in at number 529, Townville coming to... in at 588, Woodcock at 649, Broad Top There's City a... at 706. I see Hop Bottom. Yep, we got Picture Rocks, we got Shikshini. Wow, these are Jersey Shore. Mm-hmm. And my favorite Pennsylvania municipality, SNPJ, with one point at number 920. What's SNPJ? Google it. I highly encourage reading that Wikipedia page. It's delightful. Yeah, I, I can't take that from you. Slovenska Naronda Podporna Jednota, the Slovene National Benefit Society, is a borough of a population 15. Okay, well, I this is for me later. You this know what? I was gonna say I'm gonna I was say I'm gonna bookmark it, but you guys know what I'm gonna do that. You know what I'll do. I'm just leaving that tab open. That's fine. And again, but- there is Guys, there's no reason we can't found Shreveport. Like, there is no reason. Coming in at 145, we have the new Big 12 teams just ahead of the rest of the Big 12 at 154. Probably the only time that season that that will occur in that order. But both of those came in behind the LSU tuba section. Yeah. Congrats, (laughs) LSU tubas. As well they should. Uh, I do say Nebraska has fallen to number eight, and I feel like the dynasty's over. They're they're sitting at like a comfortable bowl record. They're okay now. They're not interesting enough to be that bad. They're not losing a bunch of close games. They're just they're okay, and that's not really what we do sometimes. Yeah, they're shockingly competent considering where they started this season, but they it is just kind of steady. So right now, just so you, it's 9.30 p.m. Central on Halloween. We have some ongoing action. Let's see what we got going on right now. Currently, if you're following along with us, there's a minute left in the game of Central Michigan and Northern Illinois. Central Michigan was like leading this game by a bunch. And now it's Central Michigan 37, Northern Illinois 31. And then with about 10 minutes left in the game, Toledo is palindroming um, Buffalo 31 to 13. Just- Breaking news. So Anna, you was driving to try to take the lead. Rocky Lombardi threw an interception. The chips have got it. Oh. Um, but the chips are trying to run out the clock. NIU has one timeout remaining. So the chips can take it maybe down to like 10, 15 seconds and may have to punt. And it's snowing. So who knows what happens? Knows? Okay, we'll keep we'll keep you posted on that. This uh, the Northern Illinois Central Michigan game. It's really four and four versus four and four Maction, which is the most Mac thing you can get. It also started snowing on both of these games. I think Central.